Okay, you're ready to start surfing or you have a loved one who surfs and you're attempting to learn more about it, but surfers just seem to have their own language and you're having a tough time understanding it all. Well, I'm here to help. I'm Brad Jacobson and I run around chasing waves, the people who ride them, and tell stories about these adventures. For starters, here's a few words I will not be discussing because they're not being used anymore and you should just never say them. Cowabunga, Shaka, which includes Shaka Bra, Goober, and Hang Loose. Just trust me on these. You definitely don't want to show up to the beach your first time spouting out Shaka Bras. I don't want to be a Goober, so I'm going to like hang loose. Cowabunga. Now that we got that out of the way, I'm going to keep this episode focused on the basic terms used to describe the waves and the simple things you'll see surfers doing on them. I'm going to roll these out in alphabetical order, starting with the term A-frame. The term A-frame is used to describe the way in which a wave breaks. This is a wave that peaks in the middle and rolls out in both directions. These waves are considered sacred and you probably only see them a handful of times per year. And when you do actually see one, it'll make the hair stick up on your arm from excitement. Aggro. Aggro is used to describe a surfer with an aggressive attitude in the water. You'll know him once you see him. This surfer will paddle for every wave and doesn't care who has priority. He or she will just go. But be prepared for a verbal lashing at best if you try to return the favor. These surfers are on edge and seem to be inches away from a full meltdown every time they paddle out. Backside. Yeah, there's a lot of backsides on the sand, but keep your head out of the gutter because this backside I'm talking about refers to the way a surfer is standing on a wave. Riding backside is when a surfer rides with their back towards the wave. Backwash. Backwash can describe a couple of different things, but it's most commonly used to describe when water rebounds off the beach, cliffs, or seawalls and forms a little mini wave headed back out to sea. You can probably guess what happens when this smaller wave runs into a normal wave and or a surfer. Pure chaos. Barreling. A barreling wave is when a wave forms a hollow cylinder when it breaks. Making it out of a barrel is considered by most surfers as a holy grail of surfing. Barrels are one of my favorite things to film. Now making it out of one of these barrels looks super easy, but it's far from that. Being inside a room made of rushing water can cause some very dangerous wipeouts. But to surfers, the reward is worth that risk. Blown out. A lot of ladies love getting their hair blown out, right? It means it's something totally different to surfers and brings up the exact opposite feelings. The phrase blown out in the surfing world is when the wind blows onshore, turning the waves into unridable mush. Blown out conditions are a surfer's nemesis. Bottom drops out. This is a phrase you'll hear when surfers say the bottom dropping out. They're basically saying that the wave, which at first looked good, went from sloped to vertical out of nowhere. Basically, the bottom just drops out of the wave. When this happens, the surfer basically gets ejected from the wave. That's bad for the surfer, but highly entertaining for everyone watching. Caught inside. When a surfer gets caught inside, they're basically too far to make it safely over an incoming wave. The incoming wave breaks in front of the surfer, leaving them scratching to get under it. This is the worst part of surfing. On a big enough day, the wave could drag or pin a surfer down for a very long time. Claiming. Claiming is when a surfer raises their arms, pumps a fist, or shows some form of crazy excitement after landing a big maneuver or coming out of a barrel. Similar to hitting a home run in the majors, there's an unwritten rule about not celebrating and some surfers look down on this. Hey look, if you're going to do this because you're so darn excited to have made it, then keep doing it. Let that excitement out. But be sure you actually did something before claiming it. Clipped. Getting clipped refers to when a surfer gets hit by the lip of a wave. If you're watching my episodes, you know I have a warped sense of humor. And yes, I find surfers getting clipped to be absolutely hilarious. Closeout. A closeout is when a wave breaks its full length at once, giving a surfer no chance to ride the face of it. 
Every surfer wishes there was some way to outlaw these from the ocean, but unfortunately, we're stuck with them. Surfing a day full of closeouts can be one of the most frustrating things to a surfer. Digging the nose or pearl diving. The phrase digging the nose refers to when a surfer applies too much weight to the tip of the board, forcing it underwater, which is basically similar to hitting the brakes. This will generally lead to a very awkward and almost slow motion wipeout. Getting caught digging the nose is as equally embarrassing as getting caught digging in your nose. Yeah, try not to do either. Doggy door. This is one of my favorite surf phrases, and I'm not even sure why, but every time I hear it, it makes me smile. Doggy door refers to when a surfer's in a barrel that's closing out, so they exit through a small exit hole in the outer wall of the barrel, hence doggy door. Watching surfers escape through the doggy door is quite exciting, even when the door isn't big enough. Down the line. When a surfer goes down the line, they're riding the face of the wave while standing in front of the breaking whitewater. Malibu is a great place to go watch thousands of surfers going down the line, all on the same wave. Epic. Epic is a phrase used by surfers meant to describe extremely good waves, like world-class waves. Let's get this straight. It's also one of the most overused words in the surf language. Two-foot mushy waves should never be described as epic, but you'd be surprised how many times it's been used by surfers attempting to get me down to the beach to film them. Frontside. Frontside refers to the way a surfer is riding a wave. When surfing frontside, the surfer's front, meaning like their face, their chest area, are facing the wave. This is the opposite of going backside. I enjoy a good frontside wipeout. Grom. The word Grom describes surfers usually like under 13. Don't let their small statue fool you. Groms can rip. But be fully aware that the normal wave priority rules in the lineup don't apply to them. They know they're too little and too cute for you to put them in a chokehold. Kickout. A kickout is when a surfer exits the wave they're surfing by riding off the backside of that wave. This gets very interesting in bigger waves where surfers catch mock-like speeds and get airborne like being shot out of a cannon. Heads up back there. Late drop. The phrase late drop refers to when a surfer gets a late start on the wave and basically stands up as the wave's breaking. This is one of the biggest adrenaline rushes a surfer will have. They're free falling down a wave, sometimes having their feet lose contact with their board. This often leads to full body compression and or our next term, lobster diving. I mentioned earlier that doggy door was one of my favorite surf terms. Well, lobster diving tops my list. A lobster dive happens when a surfer finds himself in a bad spot in a wave and all they can basically do is try to dive to a safer spot. This usually ends up with them either on their own wheel or by getting power pushed by the wave deep underwater and sometimes at the bottom, you know, down there where the lobsters hang out. Noodle arms. Surfers spend way more time paddling than actually riding waves. Some days the paddling is easy. Then there are those days when it feels like you're trying to paddle out in a washing machine and the waves are relentless. By the time you're done surfing, you barely have any feeling left in your arms and they just sway back and forth on their own because you're just too tired to control them. Yep, that's noodle arms. Don't worry, you should get feeling back in them in a few hours. Offshore. Offshore is when the wind blows from the shore out to the sea, causing some of the most beautiful waves you'll ever see. Give a surfer a choice between surfing offshore conditions or hanging out with a family? Let's just say they'll catch back up with you guys in a few hours. Over the falls. Going over the falls describes when a surfer gets sucked over while the wave breaks and get driven back down the lip in front of the wave. All surfers who have spent time in the water knows that feeling of going backwards and not being able to do anything about it. All you can really do is just brace yourself for impact. There's a second or two when you feel it pulling and all you can do is think, no, 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 no. Party wave. Hey, party, wave, sounds fun, right? No, 
A party wave is a wave surfed by several people at once. 99% of party waves are not started with the hopes of the first surfer up to have a bunch of people joining them. He or she didn't send out a bunch of invitations or order any balloons. This should be called an uninvited party wave. Reform. A reform happens when a wave that has already broken starts to build back up into another surfable wave. Think about it like those extra fries you find at the bottom of your McDonald's bag. It's like a two-for-one deal at your local beach break. The best thing about the reform is that the second wave is usually better than the first. So don't give up. Keep pushing for that reform. Rock dance. Rock dance is another term that sounds way more fun than it actually is. Hey Betty, you going to the rock dance this Friday? <laughs> The rock dance is what surfers do when they have to walk over rocks to get in or out of the water. There is no graceful way to do this. Leaning on your board can help, but keep in mind that rocks are harder than fiberglass. Snake. Here's a term that actually lives up to its name. Sorry snake lovers, but the majority of us just don't like it. A snake happens when a surfer starts surfing a wave that someone is already riding. I'm not getting into the priority rules in this episode, so don't even start with me. I hate to sound like your second grade teacher, but snaking someone can be downright dangerous. Spit. This is the first term on my list that actually sounds worse than it is. Spit happens when a wave blows water out of the barrel. It's basically pressure that was built up inside of the barrel being released in the form of hard blowing air mixed with water from inside the barrel. Getting blown out of a barrel with a spit is the cherry on the top to any successful barrel ride. Work. You'll hear this term a lot from the peanut gallery watching from the beach. That guy got worked. Getting worked is to wipe out with authority. This isn't a gentle, oops, I fell. This is the kind of wipeout where you end up with sand in places you don't want it and finding it in those crevices weeks later. Getting worked by a wave usually entails you doing several underwater cartwheels and leaves you having no idea which way is up. These are the kind of wipeouts that rattle you and stick with you for a long time. Zoo or zoot out. I hate to leave you on a negative term, but that's exactly what I'm gonna do. The term zoo or zoot out refers to a huge amount of surfers surfing in one area. There's crowded and then there's zoot out. This is the kind of crowd where you can feel the body heat from the surfer sitting next to you. Don't expect to get a wave to yourself on days like this and be sure to have your head on a swivel when riding because there's plenty of obstacles out there. I know there's a ton of terms out there that I didn't cover. If you guys like this episode, I'll do a follow up with more. Let me know in the comments which terms I should add to the next one. Hey, thanks for watching. I'm Brad Jacobson and I'll see you on the sand.